What is up my optimistic army? My YouTube account makes the introduction unnecessary and I'll delight you with one anyway. I'm Christian Miracle. Okay, now you know who I am. This is the next edition of Top 10 here. And this is my top 10 favorite moments from WWE Survivor Series 2017, which happened a couple days ago. And I gotta tell you, the show was really awesome. I mean, sure, it had a little um, bad moment here, bad moment there, good moment here, good moment there. But overall, it was a really good show, and I'm pretty sure like a lot of people enjoyed it, just like I enjoyed it. It was a great battle between Raw and SmackDown all night long. All right, without further ado, let's get started. Number 10, Asuka's Dominance. Now, Asuka, I kind of thought that she would be like the last person on Team Raw uh, in the Women's Survivor Series match, and oh, hold, I was right. So it was probably a lot of people. Um, her dominance um, was really awesome. So how she like eliminated three out of five members of Team SmackDown. It was really impressive, really awesome. Number nine on my list, Marisa's return to ringside. Uh, in the match between The Miz and Baron Corbin, we got a surprise, which was a pregnant Maris is at ringside uh, to support her husband, The Miz. And it was, uh, well, I did not see that coming, of course. I mean, it's, I mean, sure, she's, it was not a full-time return, it's just a one-time appearance. But um, to see her at ringside to cheer on The Miz, despite the fact that The Miz lost to Baron, um, despite that, it was a really good, really good thing, thing to see her. And I um, uh, can't wait for her. For her and Miz to have their child, and it's gonna be awesome. I mean, the Miz is currently out, well, to film a movie, but at the same time, I guarantee he spent time with his wife. Number eight, Charlotte vs. Alexa Bliss. Now, that match itself between the SmackDown Women's Champ Charlotte and the Raw Women's Champ Alexa Bliss was a lot better than I thought it was gonna be. I mean, the kind of thing I expected was an okay match, and Alexa Bliss is going to dominate the whole thing, and then Charlotte would get the figure four and win, but it was actually great back and forth action between the two women, and um, they pulled off a really good show, and I'm really proud of that. I'm glad. We really needed that, especially on a night where no titles are on the line here. Number seven, the Usos outlast the bar. <laughs> In the SmackDown Tag Team Champions versus the Raw Tag Team Champions match, the Usos took on the bar, which is kind of ironic because those were the two final teams on Team SmackDown vs. Raw at Survivor Series last year in the 10 on 10 match. And um, they were on the same sides. The Bar got the victory in 2016. The Usos got the victory in 2017. Uh, the match like had so many great tag team competition, great high flying action, great, well, pretty much great everything. Great everything. And that's exactly what we need. Number six, The Shield versus The New Day. Now, this was over a match that went over 20 minutes, and it was a great opening match for Survivor Series, a great way to kick off the competition, um, and a great way for Raw to get their first victory before they would end up winning the whole thing. I mean, I admit, I'm not a fan of The Shield's reunion. I honestly don't like it at all, because they don't need each other, and they were doing just fine on their own, but it's whatever. Uh... Despite that, however, to see those two factions go at it was almost as cool as seeing the one time, when the, well, actually the multiple times, that the Shield took on the Wyatt family in 2014. Everybody remembers those encounters. Those encounters were off the charts. They were awesome. And so was this ma opening match for Survivor Series. Um, honestly, like those matches like those that made me forget that the show was four hours. Number five, the interference of Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens during the men's 5-on-5 five -five Survivor Series match. Now, in this case, I honestly did not blame Sami or Kevin for interfering because I understood how they felt. You know, it's like Shane was just showing lack of respect for Kevin and Sami, understandable, because of their the recent feud involving the Hell in a Cell. Uh, but honestly, honestly, I just thought to myself, like, I mean, it's one thing for those two to not qualify for the match. That's totally fine. They failed to win. But to like, to like constantly show them disrespect. I mean, like that was just gonna make it's just gonna make them retaliate. And so I, 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 I understand why Kevin Owens and Sammy interfered and cost SmackDown the whole thing. Oh hell, they were reduced to the pre-show. Number four, Triple H betrays Kurt Angle. Now at the end of that Survivor Series match, just right after Kevin and Sammy made their interference, Triple H suddenly attacked Kurt Angle with a pedigree just as Kurt's got the victory on Shane. But then after that, Triple H goes ahead and still pedigree Shane and eliminates him anyway. 
I don't get it. At least the big show was uh, going with Team Authority, despite being on Team Cena in 2014 when he betrayed John Cena. But um, this method, it was more of, hey, the spotlight is mine! Uh, Triple H hopefully is in his final days of wrestling. Honestly, he shouldn't be wrestling. He shouldn't be wrestling after like uh, Seth Rollins beat him at WrestleMania. Otherwise, of course, Seth's name, the Kingslayer, means nothing now. Number three, Braun crushes the game. Yep, Braun Strowman and Triple H were the two sole survivors of the Survivor Series match uh, to end the night. Of course, Braun did not like you know how Triple H quote unquote stole the thunder, stole my thunder. Is that what it's called? Something like that. I don't know. Anyway. Yeah, uh, so Braun delivered two power slams to Triple H, who, after the show went off the air, looked like he was wasted. I wonder what this will mean with uh, Braun and Triple H in the future. Hey, maybe potentially a match at WrestleMania. Number two, many potential dream matches all in one match. And what I mean by that is, on one side, you had wrestlers like John Cena, Randy Orton, Bobby Roode, and Shinsuke Nakamura, and Shane. And on the other side, you had Samoa Joe, Finn Balor, Braun Strowman, Kurt Angle, and Triple H. I mean, like, see matches like, uh, stuff like Bobby Roode and Triple H, or Shinsuke Nakamura and Triple H, or John Cena versus Finn Balor, John Cena versus Samoa Joe. I mean, like, the list goes on, and there's, like, so many different potential dream matches all in one match, and that's what made the main event, like, the star power of it so exciting. Of course, the match itself had its really sad moments. It was like so awesome to like see all those competitors in the same match and have so many subtle hints of potential dream matches. And I think that's one of the coolest things that I had seen in that thing. And number one on my list, my number one favorite moment from Survivor Series was AJ Styles 15 minute survival against Brock Lesnar, which, okay, over the course of the week and a half that everybody was hyping up for AJ Styles versus Brock Lesnar, I had constantly said that AJ was going to get crushed, which he did, but just not in the amount of time that I thought he would. Um, for like the first 10 minutes of the match, Brock Lesnar was just like toying with him or playing with him or just throwing him around, taking a little breather, letting him get back up, hit a suplex, wait a little while longer, just smile, laugh. Uh, play around with him like he's just a little kid. I mean, AJ got offense eventually, but um, the majority of the match was Brock Lesnar dominating and, well, in other words, just playing around. He was basically treating him like he did John Cena at SummerSlam 2014. Only difference is AJ Styles actually got some offense, unlike Cena. Oh, well. But yeah, it was amazing that AJ survived as long as he did, mainly because Brock was not even trying to beat him for the first 10 minutes. Um, then once AJ finally got offense and hit a number of great moves, that's when Brock realized, oh crap, I gotta, I gotta finish him off. So he, that's when Brock finally got into the mode where he would actually win and actually dominate. And he did it. Not surprised that Brock won, I'm more surprised that AJ Styles survived as long as he did. Hell, sometimes I can surprise you with myself, and that's why it's my number one favorite moment of Survivor Series this year. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was my top 10 favorite moments from Survivor Series. What are your top 10 favorite moments from last uh, Sunday Survivor Series? Okay, also there's another thing I want to say. Um, some of my videos on my upcoming schedule have been cut due to some commitments I've done for Optimistic Awards and a couple collaborations I'm doing. But until then, don't forget to be optimistic, show your optimism, and think optimistically. I'm Christian Miracle, voice of Cinema Since 2 Expansion, and leader of the Optimistic Army. You guys are the Optimistic Army, the best fans in the world. <sighs> Catch you guys next time.